this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Today we will bless some of our home communion kits with the hopes of being able to offer home communion or in-person communion with uh, small groups or individuals. Please contact uh, Julie Ambrogi or me. This evening is Hold an Evening Prayer out on the lawn. We hope that you will join us at 7 p.m. Please wear your mask, uh, distance yourselves from groups or individuals by about 12 feet and 
There won't be any congregational singing, but two of our choir members will lead us in that liturgy. So I look forward to seeing you. Bring your chair, bring your water, and hang out um, as long as you like. The hymns this morning are 771, God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens. 776, What God Ordains is Good Indeed. 547, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. God indeed created the star-spangled heavens and in God's likeness formed us as well. In our baptism, we are co-workers with God in God's continued creation. Let us prepare to give thanks for our baptism as we sing hymn number 771. in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from death and sin and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, God, for the waters of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection, and through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over the waters that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it, and raise us to new life, and graft us to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Creator, Christ, and Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings. 
Before King David died, he named his son Solomon king. Soon after ascending the throne, Solomon had a dream where God appeared to him. In the dream, God says, ask what you need and I will give it to you. Solomon replied, my Lord, I'm very young. I have no idea how to govern. Please give me an understanding heart to judge your people. I want to be able to tell the difference between the good and the bad. I need guidance. God was very pleased with Solomon's request and said, because you did not ask for wealth, nor a long life, nor victories over your enemies, I have given you a wise and understanding heart. No one before nor after you shall be wiser. And because you did not ask for riches, I am giving you wealth. And if you keep my commandments, I shall give you a long life. It is not clear how much time had passed before Solomon's wisdom was tested. Two women, one holding a baby, appeared before Solomon one day. The first woman said to the king, Oh, my Lord, this woman and I live in a house together. I had a baby, and three days later, the woman standing beside me had a baby also. But accidentally, she smothered her baby while she was sleeping, awoke, and realizing her baby had died, took my baby and placed him next to her. Knowing I was asleep, she then placed her dead baby next to me. The second woman became enraged and accused the other woman of lying, to which the first woman said, don't you think I recognize my own baby? Solomon said, I've heard enough, and calling to a servant, asked for a sword. Solomon ordered the servant, divide the living child in two and give half to one woman and half to the other woman. The first woman holding the baby cried out, please take my baby and give it to this woman. But the second woman said, let that baby be neither yours nor mine cut him in half. And Solomon said to the woman holding the baby, you are the mother of the child, for you could not bear to see him killed. Take him and raise him well. And all of Israel heard this story and knew that their king was wise and judged his people fairly. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of a fine pearl. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We pray these words more than we realize. Once a week for sure on Sunday. Often we conclude a ministry team meeting with them. The words are etched in our souls and bring comfort. 
I see this when visiting those whose memories are being taken by dementia. When nothing else seems to make sense, we pray these words, and for the moment, the world is okay. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. When we pray as Jesus taught us, that heaven be on earth, what does that mean? What does it look like? Today in our gospel reading, Jesus gave us six parables inviting us to ponder what the kingdom of heaven looks like. This past week in preparation for Logos Login, our online Bible study, I invited the group to use these six parables as a guide to write their own. One who had the anti-racism conversations on her mind wrote this. The kingdom of heaven is like the white person who has a lifetime of experiences, both good and bad, and is able to call forth examples of life in ways that's been easier because of their whiteness. And that that knowledge henceforth colors interactions with all people for the sake of a more equal and humane world. And another who grieved the cutting down of a huge mulberry tree in her yard. She recalled that in scripture, we are continually reminded that God cannot be canceled or cut down. This tree has sprouted thousands of new beginnings that are continual reminders of a force that is constantly with us. She writes this parable. The kingdom of God is like a mulberry tree that stands steady, strong and grows deep roots and mighty enough to replant and grow anew. The kingdom of God is like roots that will never let go and will continually look to regrow in new places. The kingdom of heaven is always felt. The strength always holding on to a new place to build in a place that will sustain and touch lives. Perhaps you'd like to write your own parable. How would you complete the sentence, the kingdom of heaven is like? You can keep it to yourself or you can get it to me. You can text it, email it, or post it to our Facebook page. I think it would be fun to share our own parables. My parable? The kingdom of heaven is like the beautiful places here on earth that one knows, simply knows that God is present. And here's what's beneath my parable. It continues to be a comforting image that I have of heaven. It's this scene of rolling hills filled with lush green grass, big shade trees, cool breezes, and a creek running through it. I see this because when I was growing up, I had a horse whose name was Tara. I was about eight years old when I saw her being born, and we became the best of buds. We used to play this game where I'd bend over, and I'd look at her between my legs, kind of taunting her. And she'd come running up, and with her little muzzle would bump me over until she got too big. My mom, who knew lots about caring for and training horses, taught Tara everything. By the time she was old enough to be ridden, I could do so with no bridle or saddle. I'd simply grab her mane and swing up, and away we'd go. We traveled all over the state competing in 4-H horse shows, and Tara had this weakness for peppermints. So anytime she heard that crinkly paper, she would do anything for one. She was like a big dog, like a best friend. And when she died, I grieved. One thing that brought me comfort was envisioning her frolicking around in rich green pastures. Each time I see this kind of scenery, I'm reminded that heaven is right here on earth. The kingdom of heaven is breaking in. And someday, it will fully be on earth as in heaven. Until then, our scripture today especially 
is inviting us to take notice of the million tiny down-to-earth ways that God is at work, like a mustard seed. It's very small, it's earthy, it's real, it's touchable. Technically, it doesn't grow into a big tree. At best, it's a shrub. And often, it's considered a weed. In Matthew chapter 17, Jesus used the seed to illustrate the small faith of his disciples. So why would Jesus compare heaven to this tiny seed? How can a small shrub that is often pulled up because it's not desirable become a metaphor for welcome? and refuge and nesting. Well, I guess most of us would prefer an illustration using a big, strong tree, like the mulberry tree, not a fragile plant. Perhaps that's because many would prefer the kingdom to come like a strong warrior on a war horse, not a servant riding a donkey. Perhaps Jesus used this parable to illustrate that the kingdom is coming in ways quite contrary to the ways of the world. My interpretation of this parable, God's work in you is earthy and real and tangible. And even though it often seems insignificant, great things are happening. The kingdom of heaven is inviting us to take notice of the million tiny down-to-earth ways that God is at work, like the yeast. Again, very small, earthy. That mouth-watering thing in baking bread. This parable seems to be the only positive usage of yeast. All other places, it is a symbol for corruption pervasive and persistent. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees we read in multiple places. Why would Jesus compare the kingdom to something with such negative baggage? Most of us might know what it's like to feel small and powerless. What can one person do in a world where hunger and poverty and racism and fear seem to rule. My interpretation of the parable, God's work is in places least expected. It might even mean most at work in places that it seems absent, hidden in that dough that becomes bread. The kingdom of heaven is breaking in, my friends, and someday it will fully be on earth as in heaven. Until then, our scripture, especially today's, is inviting us to take notice of the million tiny down-to-earth ways that God is at work. So as you commune, perhaps via Zoom after worship today, or perhaps with someone on the visitation team in the days ahead or in some other way, Know that Jesus is at work in you to bring about the fullness of the kingdom. What God ordains is good indeed.
from our many locations, yet held in one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things, a mustard shrub, a person baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a COVID-19 vaccine. Lead all people to honor the scientific discoveries that you grant to humankind. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of the trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth, halt the spread of misinformation, and act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, and closed borders. Strengthen and encourage those in public health service, in the medical profession, and support services. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Give insight and wisdom to those studying racism, white fragility, and white supremacy. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Guide us in our use of technology and show us how to stay connected to you and to each other during these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Lord, keep us in your grace and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may we send these communion kids, bless them as we send them, into the community. We pray. Eternal God, whose glory is revealed in the crucified and risen Lord, bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with those yearning for communion, especially in this time of pandemic. Nourish and strengthen those who will receive it. May all the world feast upon your abundant love made known in Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Amen. And receive the benediction and that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor power nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus God the Creator Jesus the Christ and Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love Amen Go in peace, Christ is with you.